All right, so me and Dad have been on a bit of a road trip this morning. We've been to get a chassis for a 90 and some wheels and axles. I'm gonna dump it in here. So the place, quite rusty chassis, but it needs a new rear cross member and I'm gonna get the whole thing shot blasted and uh, galvanized as well once I've done all the welding on it. I've got to get the en engine mounts welded in the right place for the engine I'm going to get this afternoon. Bonk this in here, I guess. I'm gonna try and lift both axles in one go. Might work. Or it might not work. Hopefully it doesn't hit the Hilux. That's good to me. These should be pretty strong axles. They're originally Range Rover Classic axles and then they've been rebuilt by Bowler. They've been rebuilt and reinforced by Bowler, so they should be plenty strong enough. It came with some a spare wheel as well, a couple of spare rims. And now we've just been and got an engine as well. Engine and gearbox. It's a Cummins 5.9 uh, EBT. So I've heard it run, not for long, but because it didn't have any coolant, but it's, um, it sounded good. It's going to be like scrappy challenge in here this winter, getting this lot sorted out. Oh. Put it on the pallet so it's a little bit higher to work on. She's heavy. That's for sure. Alright, update on what's going on. I have, I did just have the engine going a minute ago, so I'll show you that in a second. I've chopped the rear section off the chassis because that's all totally rotten out. Totally rusted out. So I've got a new one of them on the way and then it's just a case of welding it on. Then I've got to, uh, yeah, the chassis is going away to be shot blasted and then I'm going to weld in the engine mounts and transmission mounts and then That'll be ready for galvanising then. Let's see if we can start the engine up again. I only had it going for a minute. Got a jug of diesel there, look, with the pipes going into that. I've stolen the batteries off the 3350. So hopefully there's still enough juice in the, in the batteries to get it started again. All right, we'll see what happens. They don't smoke too much. Turbo's going round. Quite pleased it doesn't smoke too much. I won't run it too long. It's got no water going round it, so I don't want it to get hot. But at least I know there's no leaks. As soon as that power comes off, it switches the valve in the injector pump, shuts the fuel off. Right, Thursday the 1st of December, I'm loading barley into a grain lorry. Uh, whilst I'm doing that, I thought I'd come in here with the camera and show you, show you guys what I've been, how I've been getting on with my project. 
Uh, I've, yeah, quite a lot's changed. Haven't done any video for several weeks. Uh, so the axles, I've got them uh, ready. I've got new seals for these swivels, both sides, and new seals for the where the prop shaft goes onto the diff as well, because this one was definitely leaking. Uh, so yeah, we've changed both of those, and yeah. I've got a new suspension kit for it when it comes to putting it all together with new radius arms and trailing arms and all that stuff. Uh, wheels and tyres. I'm going to. I'm definitely going to use these wheels, uh, but probably get some bigger tyres for to go on those wheels. So I should sell those tyres. The chassis is. So I've welded the rear new rear section on. That's all good, and. Uh, the chassis will strip down. I'm waiting for somebody to come out and uh, shot blast it for me. So get all the rust off and all the paint off. And then I think there is there is a little patch I've got to weld up there. Before then it's going to go off to the galvanizers. So yeah, chassis is going to get shot blasted and galvanized. And then the engine. This is um, not the same engine as what I had last time in the video. I had to, the other engine that I had, actually, when I started taking it to pieces, I realized that the block was cracked. It had obviously frozen at some point. So I rang the guy up. He breaks, he breaks um, lorries. And yeah, he was quite apologetic and happy to ch swap that engine for a different one. And uh, yeah, this one looks a lot better. It's a bit newer. So yeah, it's pretty much ready. It's another 6BT, exactly the same as before. It's pretty much ready to be lifted out of the chassis. I've got it all, all the pipes undone. I've just got to undo the four mounts and then I can lift it out and then start getting it lined up in the Land Rover chassis. I have got, I've already put, so I've got a kit to fit it into the Land Rover chassis and I got the parts from Reese Myers. If you're looking for some parts, look him up on Facebook, Reese Myers. So he supplied me with his gear stick selector. I still need to put the ball in there that blocks up that hole. Um, but yeah, he supplied me with that. This is the gear selector that was on there. The lorry one. That's, that's the ball. That's the ball that needs to be put onto that other one. But yeah, like there's the gear stick, and then that's the unit that was bolted where I bolted the where I bolted this one on. Um, so also, I've got a Land Rover transfer box, LT230 transfer box. So I got from Reese this plate that is going to bolt to the back of that gearbox, and then the, that transfer box bolts to this plate. So it goes straight on there. I this is the coupling for the lorry prop shaft. That was on that output shaft. So I've taken that off. I've got this gear here from Reese Myers that I need to put in the in the Land Rover transfer box. And then that is going to go, it will match up straight on there, look. So the transfer box will be driven by the lorry. I think it's a, is it a ZF gearbox, I think. Five speed. So yeah, that's the plan anyway. Because this is a TD5 chassis. I'll get some TD5 rubber mounts and then those brackets should bolt straight onto the TV, TD5 mounts. And yes, the lights are pretty shocking in here, hence I've got a Milwaukee um, LED light there look, shining over the top of the engine. Those lights that are up there are pretty naff.